2013, talking to the guitar phenomenon that is Chantel McGregor. Hello. Live at the Boom Boom Club 2013, ladies and gentlemen. Second time you played, your third time, in third fact, you yeah. played for George, didn't you? I did, yeah. My ex partner, and well, sadly no longer with us. A bit like Alvin Lee, they're probably up there having their own party, I guess. Mm -hmm. Chantel, I want to talk to you about your career for people, most people know, but this is for GetReadyToLock.com, so we should talk about. Guitars, your influences, what you've done. You've, you've recorded one album so far. I have, yeah. You want to tell everybody how it came about before we go back into the. Yeah, it's, it's been going really well as that first album. It's called Like No Other. Um, Is that an ironic title or a literal title? Mmm, that's open for interpretation. Right. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, I interrupted. That. <laughs> that's okay. Um, yeah, it's been going really, really well, and I recorded that last year, I think it might have been the year before, I can't remember now. It yeah. so fast. Um, that we're down in Sutton, not in Sutton, that's where we are now. Sorry. Sorry. With Godalming. Livingston Taylor, Livingston Brown, Brown, I beg your pardon. That's the one. Now he's the guy that played bass and now produces Robin Trout, Robin Trout right? Yeah. So how did that come about? Well, Robin I've known Robin. him since I was about 15. Right. Um, so we've worked together all them years. Yeah. Um, so he was kind of just, you know, a perfect choice for me yeah. to work with because I love working with him. So. Did he bring influences to the album that weren't there before you recorded or um, how did that We work? kind of just worked together on things, you know, I mean he's quite a modern producer, he uses yeah. quite a lot of modern techniques yeah. and modern sounds and for me I loved the fact that we incorporated them sort of modern things on some sort of traditionally type things. Yeah. yeah. And for me that was great. And you managed to pull together all these vast amount of musical influences that you yeah. play live into mm. the yeah, one album. Yeah, it's a mishmash of absolutely everything I think my album. You know, some people say, oh, there's too many different directions to it, but for uh, me, do whatever it's, you want. Yeah, it's yeah. my album and I'm... And talking about musical influences and going, I suppose talking about your live set and everything else, you've got everything in there from Jeff Tone to Metallica to Joe Bonamassa, yeah, <laughs> to Stevie Nicks, yeah. all kinds of... Yeah. Well, now, where did all those different influences come from? I mean, you didn't just find them all in one go, did you? No, no, no. I think throughout my life, I've, you know, you settle on music and you yeah. decide you like certain things. Yeah. And people bring different things to you and you go, oh, yeah, I like that. That's fantastic. And your ears pick up. It's great. And for me, it's like probably the, the rockiest stuff is probably from when I was younger. Oh. You know, the Jeff Rotten Hendrix. Yeah. My mum and dad listened to it. So, so that's where that came from. Yeah. Guess, yeah. And more recent things like pop and stuff like that, you know, yeah. Bruno Mars, Lady Gaga, yeah, some that, other thing. Yeah, it's no, just it works. what's out and what I like. And do you then adapt that stuff for your guitar playing? Yeah. You? Yeah. 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 Bring I mean, your own interpretation on it. Yeah. I kind of just take a little bit of everything, kind of put it in a big melting pot, stir it up, and it comes out as what I want it to be. And when you take it to the band to actually play on the road as such, do, do they bring anything to it that wasn't already there? Yeah. 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 I mean, we, you know, things evolve on the road. This is the thing. It's yeah. like, you know, the songs that were done for the album, they were different before the album, then they were different on the album, and then they've evolved again since. And, and everything moves. And how much of that stuff that is on the album did you actually kind of play live before you recorded it? Um, Percentage wise. Um, <laughs> no, okay. no, the people on the album, um, it, well, it, Livingston played bass yeah. on it, and yeah. he'd never played the songs before, and the drummer oh, wow. that was on there, so, um, he, he'd never played them either. Who was so. the drummer? Oh, um, right. It was Chris. Oh, right, right, right. Good, good stuff. Let's go back to the very beginning of your musical career, and you picked up the guitar at three, I think, and. Mm -hmm. Did some amazing. So by the time you got to jamming them as you did in your teens, early yeah. teens, were you already sort of set on having a musical career at that point? Yeah, you... I think so. I mean, it's it's one of them things if you try and you do well at your education and you push yourself that way just yeah. in case things don't work out. But for me, it's always been a thing. I want to do music. It's where my passion is and what I love doing. And it comes across in your playing, of course, and because you did have a point where you were thinking of doing English at one point, I think. <laughs> so that. that... Yeah. Fairly similar. Uh, and actually, when you were at the, the lead school college of music, mm -hmm. where you excelled, of course, were you already thinking about the direction, the musical direction that you were going to go in at that point, yeah. or has that evolved since? No, I, will, I mean, I were already gigging while I was doing my degree yeah. or anything like that, so right. I were doing sort of 200 gigs a year whilst I was wow. doing my degree. So I knew what I wanted to do and what direction it was going in, and I were establishing that whilst I were doing my degree. So when my degree finished, I could yeah. then take it on the road properly yeah. and do distances and come to London and other things. Yeah, and excel yeah. as you have done. Yeah. Uh, thinking about uh, music in a wider perspective, and we've got a young guy 
young band support me tonight with Jake Regan and, and Paul Long, signing his name, I don't know, but he played, I think. The common collection, they're called, so watch out for them. Did you find a problem, as Jake did, uh, I know he did because he's played it before, did you, did you have a problem finding people your own age that were listening, prepared to listen and play the kind of music that you were yeah. into? I mean, it, it's, it's a radical departure from what most oh, kids absolutely. know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, at school I didn't tell anybody what I was doing, so they really? didn't know that I was playing music. Right. Um, that was at school. At university, people were doing different things, you know. Yeah. They were either into jazz or R&B or that sort yeah. of thing. Never sort of the stuff I was into. Um, so I were always playing with older musicians. Right. And, um, so that kind of yeah, well, naturally. It's, it's, kind of, it's getting younger. <laughs> as I'm getting older, my band's getting younger. It's great. Well, I've got to say, as a promoter, one thing I've really noticed in the last, particularly the last five or six years, there's never been such a, a wide, well, a big raft of young bands coming through. Mm. The problem is, of course, and maybe you could, you've got an answer for this, but the problem is, mostly they're playing to people my age. Yeah. Or, or an audience older than you, and certainly older than yeah. they are. I mean, I don't know how we're going to, you know, without record company support as you used to have in the old yeah. days, it's a, it's a... It's hard, but I think it is coming round. I mean, our audience, we do get, you know, people of your age, but we also get younger people. For really old now. Yeah, I know, that's, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, we, we get a very varied audience. I mean, we get young girls that are seven coming with the dads and the moms and the grandparents, yeah. And, yeah. and it's fantastic. And it is slowly filtering through, but I think it's I think it's just a case of that initial hit where people are older because they appreciate that sort of music because that's what they listen to. And they've been brought up on gigging, that's, yeah. that's the other thing. Yeah, it's that work ethic of we go out, we tar it, we build a following. Yeah. Yeah. And they respect that and appreciate that. Yeah. And that's what they know as well yeah. as an older generation. But I think there is younger generations that are now following into that sort of like ethic thing. And it, it does it's And great. just getting them out at shows is, is, is what we've got to do, really. Yeah. And, and you, you, you're a beacon in that respect. You know, as you say, you get a good cross section of crowd. Yeah. Going back to recording, have you got any plans for something? Somewhere down the line, yeah. people are asking me to ask you that question. So. <laughs> Everybody's nagging me about it. Um, yeah, I'm right here. Loads of time, but I mean, you know, yeah. Yeah, for me, recording, the thing is, is I'm not going to put something out that's not perfect because I am a complete perfectionist when it comes right. to albums. Okay. And I'm writing it at the moment, and until I'm completely happy with the songs, yeah. until they've developed and I'm happy with them, I'm not going to put anything out because, right. you know, it's got to be perfect for me because okay. you don't get a second shot. No, that's very, very true. And one of the other things you, you've done, of course, you've played with some fairly stellar artists. Yeah. Ranging, oh, ranging. you stellar artists, then. No, no, stellar artists. You might have a drink of stellar artists at the time. From, from Jeff Beck to Joe Bonamassa to whoever else. Mm -hmm. Fantastic people. Did they accept you as a, as, yeah. as a musician? Did it, yeah. What did you learn from them, if anything? Um, I think... Did they give you support and encouragement? Joe has. Joe's given me a lot of... Um, Sort of business advice, really, yeah. um, which has been really useful and fantastic. Um, yeah. And he still does give me business advice, which is brilliant. Um, I think the one thing that I've really learned about it is, and it's, it's when you meet people that are further up, you always find that they're humble. Yeah. And when you meet people that are, you know, just starting out and stuff like this, you, you find it's some of still them. Still got an ego, yeah. Yeah, but by the time they've got up there, they've yeah. no egos. And I think that's the big thing is to learn to be humble and appreciate it. And, and the other big question I've got to ask you, the obvious question is, you know, you're a young woman, you're doing really well in what before was predominantly a male. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Domain. Do you see yourself as a kind of torch burner for a whole generation? Not really, no, I just do what I do. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm a girl and I'm a very girly girl with my dresses and my nail varnish, but, uh, you know, I, I don't profess to be any big, you know, beacon of, you know, but femininity. People, people, but, no, I wouldn't say that, <laughs> but just, just the fact that... I'm a girl <coughs> doing what has been a man's job, basically. Partly that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But also, you're fiercely independent. Yeah. Which, which is, a, again, a complete... Departure from what went before because before yeah. it was very formulaic, people yeah. used to do the big shapes and these yeah. yeah. And you play some immaculate guitar and, and do it effortlessly, yeah, and it's... draw people in, which, which is an art in itself. I don't know, I yeah, just I do know. it for me. It's just an organic thing that I get up and do. Yeah. You know, I play what I feel, people enjoy it. I say what I think on stage, which sometimes I shouldn't, but I do, and it's, it's a natural thing for me. It's, just One other thing, you do a lot of touring, as you said, a lot of shows. I mean, how, how do you uh, come into new musical influences? 
you don't obviously have a lot of time to listen to things. Yeah. Now. Well, people tend to on the road. They give me tape, oh, tapes. Tapes anymore. Down. Tapes now, well, yeah. Um, yeah, just stuff like that. Or they'll slip me CDs and listen to this band. They're really cool. Or yeah. you know, you just pick up on little things, or somebody will tell you about it, yeah. and you go and you Spotify it, and or any other thingy streaming thing, and you yeah. go, oh yeah, that's great. I really enjoy that. And then you buy it on Amazon or wherever, and, and away you and go. It's great. The other thing we all tell everybody about is who's in the band. For right, anybody that's that's a fabulous band. Great band. Yeah. More than a power trio. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like there's like 10 people on stage. Does it times, yeah. yeah. Um, my best player is Richard Richie. He's really cool. And my drummer is Keith McPartlin, and he's dead cool as well. And he's holding the camera. He's tonight. holding the camera, so I've got to say that. And how did you all meet up? <laughs> um, I've known Richie. Well, I met Richie when I was about 12, playing oh. jam sessions. But I needed a bass player a couple of years ago and I found him on um, on a talent website thing and right. I emailed him and he were in Russia at the time wow. and uh, he was like yeah, yeah I'll come back from Russia I'll come and do a gig and everything and he's been with us ever since and it's been fantastic and um, I've known about Keith for quite a while as well through a, a mutual friend of ours yeah. and then um, and we were a bit stuck we needed a drummer and then um, Richie were like well why don't you bring Keith and I were like you know Keith as well yeah. what? Oh, so, um, excellent combination. yeah, and we, we got in touch and he decked a gig and then he came and joined us full time. It's fantastic. Okay, that just about wraps up. You, you've got some more tour dates coming up. Any, anyone particularly mentioned apart from Sutton Tonight? Um, Sutton Tonight. And I've got the 100 Club in London on, I think it's the 16th of June, but check my website just in case. Will do. It's been big things to talk to Chantel. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, Thank you to Keith on the camera. Check out the interview on getreadytorock.com. Nearly forgot to say that. <laughs> Thank you very much and good afternoon.